we have our main guest of the evening. Hello, Mr. Greco. No filter, Paul. How are you, sir? <laughs> It's so cool you. It's so cool you know my uh, name. Probably only because I emailed it. <laughs> that's pretty much the name I know you by. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to call you. That's cool. I'm here with uh, my lovely wife Denise and my oh, good hello. buddy Big A. Uh, we all come from a history with the Opie and Andy show, so that's kind of how this started. But I've been a huge fan of you since day one. I mean, obviously, Cheetahs is a massive thing you're in. You know, you're an icon for being on that. You know, amazing, amazing. You know. Well, it, it, you know, we uh, we had our time, man. It was a it was a good run. I mean, it's still it's still on. I think. I mean, I don't know if it's still being produced, but you know, it's still on the air. And and uh, you know, it was just one of those uh, situations that um, I think it was way before its time. Absolutely. You know, when you look at when you look at what the landscape of reality television now, and forget about just television. Right. I mean, look at any social media. Um, you know, that's you know, you can't take a step without somebody YouTube. You know, put it on YouTube or you know, tweeting it or right. you know, whatever. Of course. Right. Um, and that's almost like a, it's kind of I think a Cheaters was a precursor. I mean, you look at the big shows okay. now, like Catfish. It, it it goes back to cheetahs. It's it's the same formula, really. It's people finding stuff out and catching them. And well, you know what's funny? It's like a. It, it, I think at the end of the day, it's it's a topic that is it's so relevant because everyone deals with it. Right. But as tech, yeah. but as technology develops, you find you have to find new ways to counteract. <laughs> all the technological advances right. were. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, so, so shows like formats change, and you know, catfish. It's you know, it's 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 similar and con conceptually it's similar, but you know, it kind of takes a little bit of a different twist, and and that's kind of you know, it just updates. It's like right. you know, I, I don't want to call it cheaters 2.0. Right. But, <laughs> you know, I I think it's I think it's much more than that because you know there's someone that had a different idea right. and um, and they were able to develop that in a different way. So I'm not trying to discredit you know absolutely other following shows, but yeah. but uh, it's just uh, you know it's, it's the same. Um, it's I think it's uh, it deals with the same fear right. that many people have. Right, right. So how did you actually come to be on Cheetahs? Was that like an audition or someone knew you? Or? Uh, it was an audition, yeah. Um, had had an audition. My agent called up and said, hey, do you want to audition on a television show? And at that time, I didn't know what, what, it, what it was. I wasn't familiar with the show at that time. Right. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, obviously I went in and you know, auditioned and ended up booking it. And... Uh, you know, and that was that was it for the next ten years. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, that's that's awesome. I mean, I mean, the, the rise the rise to stardom must have been unreal for someone. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying you weren't someone before that. I'm just saying, you know, you're, you're shot to the show that everybody's talking about. <laughs> you know, you're the top guy. Uh, well, you know, I humbly I'm I'm flattered that you know you you see it that way. Right. Um, it's uh you know it was it was different it was a um you know it's one of those shows it was a little controversial at the time um but it was something that everyone talked about um uh, in many different many different ways but i think um you know ho hopefully what uh, i think i was able to bring to it um was a perception that added to its longevity right. because it's it was information that everyone wanted to know about, but it was very, it's, it was sensitive to a point where you don't want people turning off, you know, at the end of the hour, at the end of the, the end of the show, feeling bad about themselves for watching someone else's misfortune. Right. Uh, so, you know, to handle the, a sensitive topic was, you know, it just, it took a little while. It took a little while for me to get used to and find the right element um, to make people feel okay. You know, it is what it is. It's late night entertainment. But, um, 
you know, if we treated it a little bit more responsibly, then I think that, um, you know, that people would be able to end, end the time going, okay, well, good. All right. Well, you know, we're helping people and, um, get out of bad situations right. and it was entertaining and we'll see what happens next week. Okay. You know, well, I re- on your Wikipedia, I, I was reading that you have, you have a BA in psychology. I do. So I'm thinking that, but, as well you know, as that probably brought a lot to it, right? Right. I, I, so that's what yeah. I was just well, thinking that. Okay. Go ahead, Denise. I'm sorry. No, I was just thinking with your background in, in um, psychology, as well as I see that you also um, had a degree in counseling. Yes, I do. That that would help, I guess, right? In aid in, in with these people yeah, who it, had it, these confrontations uh, it, and... It was the perfect storm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to tell you, though. I thought you were a good mediator. <laughs> your, your delivery, yeah. your, your ability to have this m- nightmare going on around you, and you can just walk straight for the bad guy and go, okay, what do you want to say about this? <laughs> you know? But wait, you know, Denise, and I have to say thank you so much for saying mediator, yeah. because many people will say, you know, that I instigate and I don't instigate. And I just I would always laugh and go, no, 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 I'm, I'm the facilitator or the mediator or the arbitrator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I'm not, the, I'm not the instigator. You're always the guy that gets everybody's side of the story, which was good, you know? Yeah, you know, well, you know, if anyone who's anyone who's been in a relationship knows that there are always two sides and the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we all know, you know, we've all been in a relationship where, with that one person who knows just what to do or say to you, to send you off. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Your button. I don't know if you're married, Joey, but it's just called being married. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, be careful there, Paul, because... <laughs> I know. Trust me, it's already been said on this show. Yeah. yeah. Trust me, why do you think it's called dysfunction? Now, how do you think people... Are, I mean, now there's cameras but, everywhere. You know, but wait, but it's, I don't know if it's always dysfunction. It doesn't always have to be dysfunction. It's just always... You know, we've all been in that situation where I think that we've been so angry that you know and i always call it the quote i don't care how stupid i look angry unquote mm-hmm. right. you know what I mean? exactly. because you know it just it, you're just so incensed at whatever is going on and you know you're making a scene and and uh, i mean I, I was traveling once um overseas and the only reason i'm saying it's overseas because they just have a different way of looking at things there uh, england and, where i come from is the same yeah right well i was hungry and this is, and uh, for, you know, I was there for an event and um, at the, I basically, it was, an, it was a morning event. I wasn't able, I didn't want to eat breakfast before the event. Um, by the time I was done, it was maybe 11, 11 o'clock or 11.30. Now they had little snacks and in Europe, the snacks and lunch they had were, um, you know, like salami on, you know, on a baguette. Mm-hmm. That was that was lunch. And I went, okay, I'm going to need more than that. Plus A, <laughs> plus B, I don't want salami on a baguette. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to go back to the hotel and I'm going to order lunch at the hotel. But by the time I got back to the hotel, you know, with all the transfers and the, you know, it was past when lunch, and I didn't realize that lunch was, was a national, you know, a national event that <laughs> ends at a certain time during the day. <laughs> it ended at one o'clock. And I went, oh, okay, well, surely someone, you know, there's something back there that, you know, you can throw on the grill or, you know, and they went, no, sorry, everyone's gone. It's closed. And I go, okay, well, let me just trot down the, you know, down the avenue. And I went into every bar, every restaurant, nobody. I couldn't get, you know, I could basically can go into a store and get crackers. And that was all <laughs> I was able to get. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, now, that's now. Bad. Um, it's a good thing, Paul, you had your search. Now, you okay, but wait, but I, I, I haven't turned ugly yet. I'm about to get <laughs> ugly because I, so the, the guy at the hotel said, um, the restaurant opens back up at five o'clock. Great. So now, wait that hours? night, that, that evening was also a banquet for this function, but the banquet didn't start until seven. Um, and I was part of this, you know, event. It was a hotel, the headquarters hotel. Um, I am at, so now this is like one o'clock 
I haven't had breakfast. I, I don't know what I do, but, you know, it comes 5 o'clock, and I'm at the restaurant the minute they unlock the door. And I walk in, and I went, okay, I sit down, and I go, let me have uh, this, this, and this. And the restaurant manager comes out and goes, uh, no, 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 we can't, we can't serve you that. I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, you're part of the event, and the dinner for them is at 7. And I went, I don't care. I'm here now, and I want to eat now, and I'll pay for eating now. You know, because I guess in his mind he was saying that, well, you know, dinner is, is part of the package. If you're with the event and you're with the event and that dinner is not going to be served, you can't have a separate dinner aside from the, the event dinner. And I was totally okay with that. I understood. But he wasn't understanding that. I don't care about that. I'm going to pay you for food now. And I want food now. Right, you're hungry. <laughs> aside from that. So can I just get dinner now and I pay for it? And then if I eat in two hours, because I guess in his mind, having a dinner, having a meal, and then another meal two hours from now is just ridiculous. <laughs> Because like, it's Europe. We don't do that here. And I I got, I was so angry and, ins and, and and I was like, I knew I was making a scene and I went, man, I look like the ugly American right now, but I don't give a flip because if I don't get food down my gullet, I'm going to kill somebody in the next five to seven minutes. <laughs> anyway, they got the event coordinator um, to come down and, and he explained to the guy and I went, dude, I'm, I'm happy to pay you. I'm paying you. Here's money. Here's money to bring me food. Anyway, the event coordinator smoothed it out. Yeah. I think and, uh, but yeah, it's okay to make a scene except when you're in TGI Fridays, you know, if it's inside your house <laughs> right. or, or Walmart, yes. <laughs> you make a scene at Walmart. that'll, that'll show up all over the place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I noticed that, I mean, you probably noticed that everybody's got a camera now, everybody's got a cell phone, everybody's making their own videos like cheetahs now. It's all over the YouTube, you know, you don't, do you think people should have got a clue and been even more discreet now <laughs> than they were, you know, back in 2000 when the show started? Uh, you know, well, Paul, that brings up an interesting point, which is, should people be more discreet or should people be more honest? I think they should be more honest. What's what's the yeah, point of Paul? cheating? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, you no, better I can tell, I, I can tell you Paul. Paul would be like, Well, let me be a cheater. Let me uh let me hide. <laughs> let, oh yeah, let me hide. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Do you, do you think, do you think you've been there before? Are you, are you the only person on the planet that has asked themselves that question? <laughs> you know? Oh me? Yeah. Or um, I don't know. I, I, I hope not. I wouldn't think so. I mean, I not, mean, you got no, uh, people go on Jerry Springer and they, you know, hey, I'm leaving you for your cousin or whatever. I, I mean, is that what you're talking about? Are you talking about, you know, be honest behind closed doors and just say how it is when it happens? Don't, you know, leave it eight months before your cousin sees you walking around with some other girl. Well, I, I think, I think on the front side. And, you know, if, if your relationship is having issues, you know, try and fix the issue. And if you can't let's fix do that, the issue, then first. at least be honest. Yeah, be honest right. with each other and say, look, this ain't working. What's the point of going out behind the person's back and cheating on that person if you're not happy? Okay? And then still coming home and doing whatever and living this lie when, you know, you've got a little something on the side that's making you more happy. Why can't you just – the only thing you're doing is making yourself miserable. Well, at least more you know? people are more honest about... Like, you about, need to be honest. They're more honest about open relationships now. They, they lay it down and say, hey, you can be with me, but I still need to take care of some business over there. But you, I'm telling you up front, it's going to happen. So what do you think of that? Then I would say goodbye. It's either me or that other person. But some women don't care. They'll be like, I love my, my husband and whatever it takes to be with him. They're insecure then about themselves. Do you think that's the biggest thing you learned about being on the show, Joey? Uh, that kind of thing, or would you come away with something more big that we haven't thought of? Um, I think it, I think pretty much it is what's there and what everyone sees. Um, people make choices for whatever reason. Um, 
they, for whatever reason, they justify or rationalize. Um, and it could be for any number of things. To them, they've worked it out to where they think it's okay. To others, they'll still do it, even though they know it's wrong. Um, you know, and, and at the end of the day, I, I think when you when you get when when it's all out there in the open, that's when you realize the effect that it has on everyone that's involved. Right. Right. Which you know, often people are thinking in the moment; they're not thinking down. You know, they're not thinking into the future. Right. Um, uh, and you know, it's a choice. It's a choice. In the back of your mind, to me, everyone knows that split second before they do it, they know if it's right or wrong. Right. And they make the choice to do it. You know what it is? When, or you're, not. when you're mad, though, that filter comes off a little bit. You know, most of us have that thing in our head. Well, most of us. You know, where they say, okay, I shouldn't say that. I mean, you always think the bad stuff. And you're like, your, your brain's saying, nope, don't say that. Don't say that. But when you're freaking out because you've just seen, you know, your wife with another dude... I don't think you're thinking as rationally as you would, you know. True. That's that is um, that's a unique that's a unique situation. You know what I mean? I think that normally doesn't everyone doesn't you know deal with that on a daily basis. I'm thinking, you know, um, but if you start, I mean, it's almost one of those things. If you start with little things and you know, it's, 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 here's a, here's an example. If two people, what, what makes a relationship successful? I've heard to find as two people, um, giving 100% to help the other person, other person achieve their goals. Right. Okay. Which I think is a great definition. Now, if one of those persons, if one of those people, um, pulls back and, the other person's given 100 and they're going to say, you know what? Oh, I just can't. They kick in 90. Right. Well, do you think the person that's kicking in 100 when they see the other person pulling back a little bit, do you think they're going to continue to, to give everything that they have? They'll probably pull back a little. And then it seesaws back and forth until people are just living separate lives and no one's really interested in what the other person's doing. Right. It just now, gradually works its way down. Does that happen all the time? No. Um, does it happen some of the time? Yeah, I think it does. I think it happens a lot more often than we'd like to admit. Because, and that's the struggle when you come to, uh, you know, when from a relational standpoint, relationships are tough. Marriages right. are tough. Right. Um, and because life gets in the way, there are things that need to be done, right. um, and there there are priorities that have to be, you know that there are tough decisions that you sometimes have to make. Um, they're easier to make when the person that you're in the situation with is standing alongside you, not on the, not across from you. It's, a, it's also harder these days because things cost more money. People aren't making as much, you know, the your pay doesn't increase the same speed as the bills go up, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I would imagine it, there was less financial pressure on a relationship so they could concentrate more on the right stuff. Yeah, you know, so, but we all, you know, you learn, right. you grow and you learn. So, That's what we hope anyway. So what, what happened that you actually left the show? Did you just time to move on or? Oh uh, yeah. Show, they call it show business. Right. They replaced you with <laughs> yeah. a, new, a newer model. <laughs> hey, you it had, happens. You had a, cr you, let me things. tell you something. If I think of cheaters, I think of you. I, I you know what I mean? I'm. Uh, we don't even, in New York, it's funny, we don't even get the show in New York anymore. It used to be on, like, some Long Island station. All I have to watch the show is, is I can watch season seven and eight on Hulu, or G4 used to replay the same 50 shows before that went under. So we don't even get to see it. I haven't even seen your newer stuff. I, I'm itching to see it, you know. Okay. Well, uh, it's out there. Yeah. What, um, you know, but... Um... So, so what have you been up to after that? I see you've produced a couple of things. Uh, yeah. Um, I was uh, involved in a uh, paranormal parody Ooh. that we did a couple of years, <laughs> a couple of years back. <laughs> I like that paranoia was, stuff. 
that basically we were just making fun of, you know, all the popular paranormal shows, right. uh, which was uh, which was a lot of fun. Since then, um, just you know, been uh, you know trying to develop some concepts. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Have some things that are kind of in the works. But do um, you do you see yourself behind the camera now more than on? You know, uh, I I don't know if I can. I mean, I'd say yes and no. Right. I mean, I I enjoy both sides of it. Right. Absolutely. You know. I so, mean, on the I mean, you know what though? It's like it's. I would imagine for someone who's been doing what you were doing for so long, you know, the first thing people see when they see you doing something is, "Oh, look, cheaters," you know, and that that must get annoying at some point, right? That you can't be Joey Greco, the actor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you know what? Um, it's you could never, or I don't think I can ever be. Um, it's always flattering to be recognized mm -hmm. in the industry. Right. So, um, you know, the fact that someone, the, the fact that someone might recognize me, I can't, I'm, you know, I, it's hard for me to get bummed out. Right. Um, why? Um, uh, because they're part of the reason that, you know, I, the show was successful. Right. Um, you know, but yes, there, there is a time when you go, okay, well, you know what I mean? We all want to expand and grow and and find new platforms and and um, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. like, like grow and and find other things that are challenging to to uh, to accomplish. So yeah, I can understand that totally. I can definitely understand that. It must be uh, somewhat annoying at some point, at least when you're in the you know you've gone for the uh, the audition and the guy's like, oh look, it's Jerry Greco. You're like. Ugh. <laughs> uh, well, you know, here's the thing. It's, it's uh, I can't. I, I don't think it'd be fair for me to complain right. about being recognized. Mm -hmm. Um, it and also, I can't have it both ways. No, would exactly. I rather be unknown and go into a room, right. or would I rather a casting director recognize me? Um, it's an obstacle. Yeah. At, at some point, it surely is an obstacle, but um. Um, then, you know, I, I, I'd rather that obstacle than no one know who you are and right. being, you know, having a fight through that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you think actually that your name would get you in the door, you know what I mean? Because, you know, especially a, a movie that may not be, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, billion dollar production, you know, some people might say, oh my God, if we can get Jerry Greco, that's going to help us. You know, so I, I'm sure. Yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> there are people out there saying that. Yeah. Well, I, I, maybe some of them will listen to this and go, wow, I didn't know. <laughs> Let's prove Joey wrong. So, I mean, there's been a little bit of talk, and I, you don't have to even comment on this if you don't want to, about some of the episodes being fake. Um, I'm guessing you just can't talk, period, about the whole thing. So I'm going to just ignore that whole thing. I'm just reading some of the questions that people have asked. Um, Uh, oh, here's a question for you. Were you born in the Bronx or Philly? <laughs> uh, it was actually neither. Um, <laughs> That's I funny. Was born, <laughs> was born. <laughs> yeah, um, was born in um, on Long Island. All right, because your Wikipedia says you're born in the Bronx, but your IMDb I know. says you're born in Philadelphia. <laughs> and you know what's funny? I just. I, there's so many things that I read about myself. Right. Um, like we, that, I just, you know, when people will, you know, will ask me a well, question, I go, where, where's that coming from? Oh, this. And I find it more amusing right. to the fact that, you know, I, I don't even, why do I need to correct it? Let, let the inf misinformation fly around. And, and if anyone really cares enough that, you know, they want to find out. Ask me, and I'll, and I'll tell them. But yeah, can, I'm not going to go chasing around trying yeah. to, you know, re-educate everyone on 
you know, if they think it's, oh, but, and I'm not married and they don't have two kids either. Because that, <laughs> that one no, is I, out I, there I, too. I wasn't even going to bother. But I think, but I think that one is, um, I think that one is, uh, is, um, in the, uh, in the Philly one. Okay. I think the Philly one had me married with two kids. You know, maybe maybe that came from the TV show because they're trying to make you look like a regular married guy, and that would be a better person to interview these people than just some single guy who doesn't care and who probably do half the stuff they're doing anyway. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they. <laughs> they look maybe that, maybe they weren't that organized. <laughs> maybe <I'm> then, <laughs> then they would. Then they wouldn't have got Clark to host it if they were worried about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's funny because I was reading some of his bio. And I'm like, this kid's probably, they probably hired him and said, go do some shit. <laughs> do as much as you can to get yeah. your attention and off you go. Yeah, it is kind of funny. He, I, I, I mean, Tommy, you know, Tommy Grant, Tommy Habib that was there before you, he had the look, you know, I, his delivery was no, it wasn't Joey Greco. You know, he, his delivery was, you know, okay. But then you perfected the leather jacket and the glasses and the, the look. Well, the you know, everyone's got their style. <laughs> Everyone has their style, and you know it's uh, you know, and it, it took a different. It just it it really honestly took a while to to find the right mix of it. Mm -hmm. You know, if it were my preference, I you know, I would I wa would I have wanted to be in a leather jacket? Would I have wanted to? I, I ended up throwing my glasses on because it was like a last minute audition. Right. Um, that was just kind of a fluke. And then they they said, "Oh man, we like that. We like the glasses. Keep the glasses, <laughs> you know." And yeah. so I was like, "All right, well, I guess we're wearing glasses now for the show." <laughs> um, you know. And anyway, you got a black. You got a you know. You got something black, like a black leather jacket. And I went, right. "No, I you know, not that I'm anything against mm -hmm. leather, mm -hmm. but I, I you know, black leather jacket wasn't." wasn't in my repertoire right, right. <laughs> was not in my wardrobe no. um but they wanted to, okay so we'll get a black leather jacket and then all of a sudden it's uh, you know just that was the that was the thing now was it, and were you know you what ever... i don't have a black leather jacket anymore right <laughs> were, were you ever because of your look and people got to know what you look like were you ever outed before the payoff because you're a block away filming <laughs> you know uh I'm trying to think if that ever really happened. I think we tried to stay. Uh, okay, well, let me say this: being in Dallas, and when people saw two white vans right. driving around, <laughs> you know, it, after after a certain period of time, they pretty much knew what was up. <laughs> you know, is there any reason like, they oh, didn't? Okay. So, so even so even if we did, you know, uh, we pretty much tried to stay as as out of sight as possible. Um, but once it was all systems go, then we were going in, right. and Who if cares? there was a crowd, yeah. you know that always added that always added to the production. So, right. is there any reason they didn't try doing in other cities? Uh, For some reason, um, I seem to remember one episode that was in New York, but maybe that was just the way it looked. Uh, we did we did travel. Um, we did travel, but if you think about, um, from a, from a production cost right, standpoint, you know, a lot of people. uh, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, we had, we had a big crew and to go from one city, you know, it wasn't like a, it was a road show. So we, you know, it's, we would go to another city if it, if it might have added production value, um, a and B, if there were enough cases in in that area oh, right, that so would warrant, yeah, so you know, don't... shipping a whole crew out there. Right, because right. if, you know, okay, and then trying to see if, if it all happened within a week. So if you had five, say you had five cases and you never knew when a case was going to hit or not, but out of those five, two of them hit, well, would the expense of you know of shipping a crew out to another city for one week uh, because you really wouldn't want to stay much longer than that right. for a whole for a week um to get two cases would that really 
you know, would that be worth it? What would that break down to per case? And so um, I think there's a time that every other season we tried to do at least a couple of cases out of town. Okay. But if it didn't, if it didn't add, you know, production value to the, to the show, then we pretty much stayed local. Right. Okay, someone just messaged. They want to know what the scariest moment on the show was, and I'm assuming we can skip the, the stabbing one because that's probably the answer that gets told every time. I'm interested to know what other show. Uh, the, the one that comes to mind right now was um, the, there was this huge dude who was just big and angry, and um, everyone ran in different directions. <laughs> and, and, you know, he was ran to his car and got in his car. And when I looked around, it was just me and one camera guy and one sound guy. And all the security guys, you know, the security guys had all scattered and they were chasing other people around. And, you know, so it was just us. Well, you know, of course, I still have to have that conversation with him. Wow. Now, what what, um, what was he? Was he the, the instigator, the guilty guy, the secret partner? Which one was he? He was the... He was the um, he was the boyfriend of our client okay. who was seeing another, who was seeing another woman. Oh, okay. So, um, so now I'm there, I'm knocking on his window. And, and when I say big, I mean big, like I have a couple of friends that are, you know, play ball or six, five, six, four, you know, that's big. Mm -hmm. right. But this guy was big, big, like, you know, that's 300 cool. plus probably six, seven, six, eight big. Wow. And he was angry and he was in his car and I'm knocking on his window. I'm like, come on, man, don't you want to come out and don't you have anything to say? You can't be afraid of, you know, a woman, your girlfriend, <laughs> you're and look at you. Come on, come on out. And that's what I was saying. But in the back of my head, I was saying, don't get out of the car, dude. <laughs> you're okay right where you are. <laughs> You just you just stay right there. You can be mad right there. I can hear you just fine. But of course, I'm. Like, come on, man. Come on out. Talk to us. Give us your side of the story. And he was just cussing and yelling, and and then uh, you know, of course, then I got to just you know shrug my shoulders and go, yeah, you know, he's just driving away. He just drove away. I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah. What was the most God, embarrassing situation? I'm that sorry? You've, what was the most embarrassing situation that you've ever walked in on? Uh, Wasn't the one where there's a motel room and the guy was like tied to the bed or something? <laughs> you no, know? you know, there were there. There's just a lot of there's a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting activity. Oh, like kinky sex and stuff like that. that you've ever walked in on? Yeah, there's uh, always that. Yeah, I think we've seen it on the show. <laughs> so, what's in the future for Joey Greco? You, you said you you're work developing some projects. Is there anything immediate that we're going to see soon, or? We just... uh, I hope sooner than later. Right. But if, uh, but if, um, you know, I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to social media, you know, uh, tweet any any pertinent information um, that has that has to do with it. Uh, there's a, uh, a, a role on a film that I booked that is coming up. Uh, we're shooting sometime this fall. Um, it may be, it may be early, like fall or early next year, right. which will be a lot of fun because it's a horror thriller. Oh, uh, right. But then these other, uh, these other projects are more, um, are more unscripted, uh, not a, like a, a reality based. So, um, so we'll see where, uh, where those go, but I'll be, uh, I'll be shouting it out to everybody. Right. Um, and your Twitter is the Joey Greco, correct? The Joey Greco. Uh, and your website, joeygreco.com. Sure joeygreco.com. Uh, and then Instagram is the Joey Greco as well. And nobody needs my Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I really appreciate you calling in, Joey. And when Thank you, you, when so you have your next hit, hopefully you won't change your number so we can't get hold of you. 
<laughs> you have, well, you know how to get you know how to reach me by now. We, right. we uh, absolutely. There are a number of ways, and yeah. we we navigated through that. So very cool. Well, thanks for the time. Everybody? I appreciate yeah. the uh, interest and um, continued success. Thanks a lot, Joe. I really appreciate your time. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you. Take care. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye bye. bye, -bye.